Hey everybody, Carl Shrew from Snorkel.tv and today I want to just do a little follow-up to my last video on using Tween Max for that NVC effect and uh, let's look at the file I was working on right now. Um, you'll see the text flies up, then it folds down, then made fun sort of corkscrews it. We talked about this effect in detail in my previous video. Um, what I want to do is address a few comments that I got from my number one fan. Um, the first comment was um, why do I get these little white squares if I move my text around? Well, when I was demonstrating this in my first video, what happened was I had pulled the word flash up here just so that it would stand out a little bit in the beginning. And take a look when this animation starts that we get that those white squares there. What we're really seeing is um, that text folded on its back and we're re literally looking up at it. Uh, what's happening is this text is getting transformed in three-dimensional space and our code is saying I want to flop you down 90 degrees so here we're seeing some of the, of the bottom of that text and to really make this clear I'm going to use my 3d rotation tool on this text and I'm gonna just roll over this red line and you'll notice that that little X comes up next to my cursor alright well in my actions when this animation starts we're setting the rotation x value to negative 90 we're doing an all from negative 90 that means that those characters are literally laying flat on their back so what's happening is something like this okay programmatically we're offsetting the code so that it's laying straight down and now if I move this clip around you'll notice that as I move it excuse me down, you'll see our perspective is going to change. Let's only select one thing. Thank you. And now as I pull it down, I can actually see more of those words. It's as if those letters are laying flat on their back and I'm looking down on them. As they move up above the where my virtual camera is focused, you can see again that we see them. So depending on where the symbol is, it's going to look different because it's being rendered in 3D space. All right, so I sort of lucked out when I was doing this demo in that, let's undo all the way back, that once I brought the text down here, I didn't see those letters at all squished down because they were literally right at eye level and they're technically paper thin. They don't have um, a height to them. But if I move them way up here, you'll see that we see more of them. So that's why that problem was happening. So let's leave it so that you know we see that little glitch in there. To fix it, what I'm going to do is just add some more code. And what I literally want to do is turn off the alpha of each character in this movie clip so that I only see each character when it starts to animate in. So in my actions panel here, let's just select frame one. Um, when I introduce flash, right now all I'm doing is an all from. I'm laying them all on their back, waiting one second, and flipping them all up. Well, I'm going to use two lines of code here. The first line here is going to tell all those letters instantly, there's going to be no duration for this tween, to set the alpha of zero. Notice I'm using an all two. That means all the movie clips in this array are going to be instantly turned off. Then the next line tells all of them to set their alpha back up to one, but we're going to wait one second for the delay, and everything's going to be offset by 0.05 seconds. And the timing of this new line of code that I just added is exactly the same as the timing in the line of code that flips everything up. You'll notice that um, the delay is one second, so they're both going to start at the same time, and they both have the same stagger. I don't need my letters to be fading in, so I'm just going to instantly, in zero seconds, make their alpha one. Alright, so now I don't see the letters until they come in. Alright, and I can place this clip now anywhere in 3D space. I don't have to worry about seeing just partial remnants of those letters folded down. It looks good wherever it goes. All right, so that's just a little bit of a uh, fix there for you guys. I'll put that code on the screen one more time. Probably not going to zip up these files, so 
just hit pause and you can add that to your movie. All right, cool. Now the next question was, what if I want to repeat my animation? Well, that gets a little bit more tricky. It is possible to take all this code, put it into a function, and then set a timer to run it over and over again. But when you're using all from and all to, uh, what happens is once this code runs through, all of these words and letters are going to be in different places from when they started. And then when you run through the code again, all from is really going to have a different meaning because these letters have already been flipped and it's just kind of a mess. So when you want to use advanced sequencing, you're going to want to turn over to Timeline Max. I've done one video on this and uh, you can reference that or go to the greensock.com site for all the goodness there. There's a great video on this. Um, and let's go back to the original file that I had started with and it's this one right here where the animation has a lot more going on. You have these little dots flying around, you have words shifting over while other ones spin up. So this is what I would refer to as you know slightly advanced sequencing. Um, and this is all built with Timeline Max. I didn't do a full tutorial on this exercise because the code, honestly, it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. So what we're doing is we're setting up something called a timeline and when you create a new timeline, every time you add new tweens, they automatically run in succession, uh, depending on whether you use insert or append. And also, I have nested timelines as well. So we have a timeline for the dub 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 that flies across, and we have another timeline for all of the characters folding down, and I have another um, timeline somewhere. No, nope, I guess I just have two of them. But there's a lot going on here. Now, this might look like, holy mackerel, a whole lot of code. Well, it's a great sort of challenge to put yourself through. I really learned a lot about tween max and doing this. But once you go through the heavy lifting of setting this all up, what is awesome is that I can eventually say, hey, you know what? My main timeline, right now, you'll notice that it doesn't repeat. It's just going to play and stop. Well, if I want to repeat it, all I have to do is add a repeat parameter. I can say repeat, and I'll say three times, and I'm going to say repeat delay is going to be two. So that means that it's going to wait two seconds before it repeats, and it will repeat three times. So once I did all that heavy lifting, now it'll play once one, two, whatever, and then it plays again. Again at the end, we read the words make the awesome. Well, I can also say, you know what, the repeat delay, let's just make it 0.2 seconds. So now it's going to run very quickly as far as the repeat is concerned. Right? We didn't even have to, we could hardly read make the awesome, and it just starts over and over again. All right, so we have that sort of flexibility. Furthermore, let's just make that one second. I have a time scale property, and I can say the time scale is going to be 0.2. All right. So now this is going to slow down every aspect of this tween, including the delays. Look at that. I didn't have to tweak a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of different properties. I literally, it's almost like changing the frame rate of your main timeline working in Flash and making really, really long tweens on the timeline. But there you can see the effect in slow motion. The opposite of this would be, well, let's have it play 1.5 times as fast as it should. All right, just to increase the time scale. And now it plays super buttery, okay? So once you go through the work of learning a little bit about timeline max, creating nested timelines, nested timelines with insert multiple it's amazing what you can do um, so we have nested timeline another nested timeline and then we add both of them together and uh, you get some really cool stuff all right now well, what I'm going to do is show you you know some of the downsides of you know the first way we did it it was really pretty easy to set up everything that we needed come on flash Show me what I want. Actions frame one. Oh, let's scroll up. Wow, it's late. 
Okay, let's wrap this up. Now, if I say, you know what, I want to wait a little bit longer in the beginning, right here, let's just say I'm changing two numbers, and what that does is it knocks out of whack the rest of the animation. You know, that looked like garbage. Um, so there's a lot of different delays being set by hand in this movie here, so changing the timing on it is going to be really cumbersome. Also, if I wanted to say, hey, you know what, let's make this animation a little bit slower. Make it take 1.5 seconds. It's just not going to work the same way. Didn't look horrible. But, you know, start going up to about 3 seconds, and you'll see some big changes here. So, made fun happens before the other text has even showed up full. All right. Um, so again, Timeline Max, it's a little bit more work from the get-go. I will have a few tutorials on Timeline Max in the future just to uh, show you nested timelines and stuff. But uh, I don't want that to stop us from learning a really cool effect. And I think this NBC corkscrew text effect is pretty cool. And you can doesn't have to be difficult to build. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, if you got any questions, fire away. I'd love to answer them. Bye.